Hello everybody and welcome to another Transformers third party review. In today's video I'm taking a look at the second offering as part of the Iron Warriors line. This is the IW02 Strife 07 aka kind of kit build version of 07 Movie Brawl. This is the dual model series, uh, very similar to the DMK versions of Transformers. Quick look around the box. It is very, very straightforward. We've got a schematic on the back there. They haven't pumped a lot of money into the packaging. At the end of the day, they wanted to deliver a fantastic product at an affordable price. Now, if this is your first time visiting one of the Iron Warrior products, it's basically a kit build masterpiece scale figure. I've already reviewed the Ratchet from the series, so it was a really nice looking Ratchet, probably the best representation of Ratchet on the market, and I'm very much looking forward to getting Brawl done. Uh, now, I got rid of my leader class Brawl, because uh, uh, although I liked how it looked, it was just too clunky and didn't really fit in with the current masterpiece movie line. Uh, so I'm hoping that this guy does felling that. I know the likes of uh, Black Mamba, etc. Uh, more than likely rejigging the Studio Series Brawl and uh, pumping him full of Energon steroids and giving us an oversized version of him. All the parts come in baggies. Uh, so for example, number three will be the third selection of parts you put on. Uh, there's a number one in here somewhere, uh, but I didn't get any instructions with Brawl. Uh, we got instructions with Ratchet, making it fairly straightforward to build him. Uh, this will be a little bit more difficult. Uh, I'm gonna have to kind of guess where things go. And with 20 baggies of parts, uh, this is gonna be fun. Let's start with the packet number one, surprisingly enough. We're gonna start by building up the feet. It actually feels like a more robust plastic in comparison to what we got with Ratchet, which, uh, I mean, Ratchet was good for a model kit, but uh, this does feel a lot tighter. And uh, my personal advice is uh, when you're building this and you want to keep it together, I would personally recommend gluing it all into place because at the end of the day, it is a kit and it could still possibly move right we've got this on here the next port of action is to add the toes on just slide those on if you look there's a small notch on the back of this pin so they will only go on the one way it's like a little t and there we go slide this piece up and over like so now I'm gonna be a bit naughty and we're gonna to skip to number five just so I can keep these feet even otherwise I'm gonna get completely lost and uh, just bear note look uh, this here it's got a slight that's not a stress mark, is that's clearly a crack. That's cracked there, uh, where it's too tight to go on. That's probably my fault. Moving on to bag number three. Come around to the back of the leg. These parts slide in and in. Then come to the inside leg, and we're going to put this brace in. That sits in this hole here, and that just comes up to this top peg here, and pegs in securely. Grab bag number two. This piece pegs in at uh, this long peg here. Pushing in securely. This branching piece then comes in. Goes through the gaps and tabs in at the back. The cap comes at the back of the knee, tabbing in firmly. Bring in this large piece that's going to tab in just here and here, building up the side of the leg. 
this spike section goes at the ankle, sliding in nice and tight to then have this shin section that just tabs in like so. Using these two pegs, we can then build up the front of the leg, just pushing those in firmly. And the same with this side, this one and this one. They're just going to slide in, securing the front of the shin. There's a peg just inside here. I think I was meant to slide this in before. <laughs> Tabbing that in just above the knee. Move on to packet number four. Sliding cog on his hip. Blade on the side of the leg. Armour at the top, the small tab, just fits in here. Crotch plate goes just in the corner of that hip. And then we have a tab just above his buttocks where we can slide this piece in, finishing that off like so. Now we need to repeat this whole process using bags six, seven, and eight. Nine and 10 are the hands. I've already installed the thumb, and then we need to install the fingers, I believe, <laughs> I hope that uh, they are all the, exactly the same length. Uh, it's just a matter of kind of, I may have to shave it down a fraction. Ah, no, we're in. We are in, there we go. Look, we are cooking. <laughs> yeah. Man, that was a lot more difficult than I was expecting. This tab here goes just in here push that in. I believe these go on this way around. Uh, don't quote me on it, it's not overly easy uh, to see, but having them this way allows us to rotate the elbow fully. If they're on the other way around, then we have no movement in that elbow at all. So let's hope that's how they go. Oh, it would have been so much easier if they'd just given me instructions. Opening pack 11, we get the guns. So you want to just pop the caps on the tip of each one. And then you just want to thread the gun through the hole on this shield section. And that's just going to tab directly into Brawl's back. With number 12, we start to finalize his back, kind of bulking him out slightly tab these all in at their correct spots. Will any go in the right positions? And then these slide on the side like so. Really loving how this is starting to come together. Like I said though, I apologize if I get anything in the incorrect order. I am kind of going in blind. Opening bags 13 and 14, we get the sections for the chest and crotch. You just bring in the crotch flap, just sits in like so, and pushes in to position. This piece slides on the waist finishing off that section. You can bring in the chest piece. Those two circular tabs and just slide in nice and firmly. Bring in these pointed sections. They're gonna go in and across the chest. These pieces just slide inwards like so. There's the circular tab there. That's just going to slide in to the center. And 
can just square off. We then have these two circular tabs on the top of his head. These are going to slide in, forming his eyebrows. And then this piece here will tab in to the top, finishing off Brawl's head. 15 and 16 form the side spiked sections there. Uh, you want to grab your claw. We have this guard piece, which can just go, which goes just along the outside of the claws. Make sure the black piece is the long end facing outwards and the short end attached. This then goes in to that peg. And then this piece here slides just in to here, like so, forming the claw piece. And then it's a very tight fit, but this actually slides just underneath the breast there and then comes down. Bag 17 contains loads of these pieces that we just need to plug in and build together. And then once we've done that, we can plug those in to the rocket launchers on the top of Brawl's shoulders and then add these last sections on. So we slide these through. So, and then place the cap on the rear. So we're left with something that looks a bit like that. Please just be super careful because my pin here and here have snapped off. They came off willy nilly. Uh, we'll glue these into place, but just be extremely mindful that they are a little tiny bit on the fragile side. Uh, let's pop that on there. This then goes up and over like so. So the holes line up. And then we have this piece here. Uh, the gun can slide in. And then this goes in like that. God, this kit is absolutely destroying my fingers ridiculous and then this can slide on like so and then this will come around to the outside of this hand and we've got these two sections here they should with the arm straight line up nicely and just port in on that arm. 19 is pretty similar. Again, we get this section here and these tab in this piece here, slides on, this piece slots in on the middle, which helps support that. We've got this piece at the back here that tabs in to the back of that green. And then we can just finish it up by adding the other side on. So just bring that around. Slide these all in to position, like so. And then, like we did with the other arm, we can just bring this around. And this is going to tab in. On the underside like so. And here we have him fully completed. And doesn't he look good? Such an amazingly stocky build. I only had two little faux pas. I had the ones on the arms there and I had the one on the toe. Now we do still have a bag 20 to open, but that is just replacement cap that goes over where these pieces tab in. If you want to just have him without those weapons but absolutely love how brawl looks they managed to capture his cgi model pretty darn well and he's definitely not as flimsy as ratchet but by any means nowhere near on par 
with the likes of the Hasbro official leader class brawl. It's a completely different style of plastic. If you're used to Gundam kits, then you'll know what I mean. This is similar, but it's a pretty good, it's a high grade, I'd say, but it's still not production quality. Let's take a closer look. That is a darn awesome head sculpt there, really managing to capture his true likeness. Love these plastic treads as well. They have the ability to move these shoulder mounts upwards and downwards. The shoulders themselves are on two hinges that can rock forwards and backwards independently of one another. We have an upper bicep rotation. As you can see, we've got a nice bend on that elbow, really complete bend, and it goes all the way down, fully extending. We have rotation on the wrist as well as individual articulation on each of those fingers and on the thumb. As previously mentioned, we can remove this piece if needed, and we can just replace it with the panel sections. They just plug in. Uh, we do have a waist rotation. Unfortunately, no abdominal crunch, but we do get leg movement forwards, a little bit of hindrance there, and backwards. Uh, we can come out to the side. There is an upper knee rotation there. We have a bend on the knee, forwards and backwards, and we have tilt on the foot, as well as an up and down motion. Other than the toe causing a problem, I mean, it's a pretty darn amazing look for Brawl. If you bring in some other figures there for a comparison, here he is alongside his Studio Series counterpart. As you can see, they've definitely upped the game when it comes to the level of detail. And we have Ratchet in there as well as the MPM-04 Optimus. Well, actually it's the uh, legendary toys version, but it gives you an idea of how they scale. And if we bring in the likes of Megatron as well, uh, I I don't know if that works. Should Brawl be slightly bigger? I think if this set itself gets any bigger, it's going to look ridiculous next to some of the other figures. I think there's definitely enough detail captured in the kit, and I personally really like that scale. He's very nimble, he's very agile, and he still comes across as a complete beast of a Decepticon. If Black Mamba do come out with a oversized kind of adapted version of the Studio Series Brawl then I will compare the two but for now I've just removed this piece and we're going to replace it with the arm guard just so you can see how that looks. It just completely tidies up his arm. Uh, not a fan of the weaponless look but at the same time, it's definitely nice to have options and it does make displaying him just that little bit easier. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. Personally, I think the kit is leaps and bounds better than the Ratchet, which in itself was not a bad kit. It was probably made more complex by the fact they didn't get instruction manuals. And of course, there were those points in which I applied too much pressure and the parts snapped so please be wary when making your kit but this is highly recommended it is a very detailed look for him and if you like the dmk kits then this is definitely right up your street i've included a link just up here to the ratchet review and until next time from myself and brawl thanks for watching uh, goodbye